Hi, welcome to Pink Board. Today we are going to see the summary of Landscape of the Soul, which is written by Nathalie Trivorai. When you take this lesson, this is given in two parts. Part one will be dealing with comparison of uh, two different painting which is done by Chinese painters and the European painters. When you take part two, it gives us about people who have done some piece of art without undergoing any formal education for that. So these are the two parts which are going we are going to have here and in the first part we will come across Chinese painting and European painting. In part 2 we will come to know about raw art or what we call as an outsider art. So let's go and see a few pictures on Chinese painting and European painting. So this is how Chinese painting will be and this is what European painting is. So what is the difference between these two is uh, Chinese painting will demand the attention of the viewer who is looking at the picture. So complete concentration is essential to admire what is given over there. So it, it is it will be in a form like we have to find out what is there in the painting. But when you take the European painting everything will be given in a cr crystal clear way. So how far uh, the artist have seen it okay that's how it will be projected in the painting so you will be borrowing the eye of the painter so we can say like that so how far his view is we will be coming to know the painter's view and we will admire it but when you take the Chinese painting you are allowed to uh, admire it as long as you can and you can decide the things which are there by yourself based on your mindset and this is what is given here in Chinese painting and we will come across two classical education. One is Daoism and the other one is Confucianism. So here uh, Daoism is proposed by Zhuangzi and Confucianism is proposed by Confucius. So by these two hmm, philosophers we can call uh, the China's classical education has been formed for painters. So for this uh, we come across a story which has happened in 8th century. Uh, there was a painter uh, whose name is Udaozi and the, there was an emperor his name is Zhuang Zhong. So what this Zhuang Zhong did is he assigned Udaozi to do a painting. And what is that painting? As it is a landscape which has to be done over the palace wall. When you take the palace wall, it is first painted in white color, having the white as the base. Uh, the landscape is painted. So, what is landscape? Is uh, trees, clouds, sky, sun, and then uh, some birds. Um, a waterfall, a mountain, all these uh, what we call as a natural scenery. So that is what is a, a landscape. And here uh, the painter drew it and he covered it okay, because as it is assigned by the emperor, the emperor should be the first person to have a look over it. So that's why he drew the painting and he covered it until he reveals that to the emperor. So the emperor is the first person who comes to see what is painted by the painter. So when he came and admired, he couldn't able to identify that there is a cave on the footpath of that mountain and the painter showed that and also he said that there is a door okay and we can open the door and if it is open we can enter inside it and we could able to find how splendid it is and what while talking what the painter did is he clapped his hands and the door got open he got inside before the emperor could say something about it the whole painting got vanished and not even the brush and the paint of the painter to be found after that and this is a story which can be found in the books of Daoism or Confucianism, which will be given for the children who undergo training with respect to painting. And contrast to this story is a European painting where we come across a painter who has drawn 
uh, a dragon on the wall and he left it okay without drawing the eyes because what they believed is if they draw the eyes of the dragon the dragon will get vision and it will fly away so such stories were found in the european education also so to make it clear what this european paintings are a story is given about a painter and his daughter so this painter's daughter has fallen in love with a blacksmith his name is quinton mitis okay but the painter wants his son in law to be from the same profession that is he want him to be a painter so here the squinton mitis was in a uh, condition to convince his father in law a painter that he has a good sense on art so what he did is in his father in law studio in the painter studio he drew a fly on the panel so when when the painter got inside the studio he thought that it is a real fly which is over there and tried to spat it away using a, a, a stick and later on he came to know what actually happened and it is not a real fly it is a painting which is done by the blacksmith and after that he appointed that blacksmith as his apprentice and he became one of the best painter of that age so this is what the difference is when you take the european painting okay we will find it to be somewhat realistic it is exactly appears to be how it appears in real life when you take the asia that is uh, the chinese painting it deals with our heart and mind so here the right the painter will not allow you to imagine how it is imagined by him okay so here you are allowed to imagine as you can okay so it depends upon your mood and your state of mind and your experience and all those okay so you can decide what is over there and this is what the concept which is said in uh, daoism uh, in china's classical education that is sanzui so what is the meaning of sanzui is mountain water so when you take this mountain and water uh, it is represented as both or opposite to each other when you take the mountain it is standing straight towards the sky but when you take the water it is somewhat horizontal in position and when you take the mountain it is stable whereas water is moving and when you take the mountain it is said to be somewhat dry and hot but the water seems to be somewhat so cool and moist so both of them are possessing opposite characteristic and moreover they are also said that one is uh, feminine and the other one is masculine so here what this daoist theory is they were dealing with the center middle void so not on this extreme nor on that extreme so in between that is what is considered to be the third element that is middle void and here they are using uh, uh, a yoga yoga practice telling that pranayama that is uh, where we will indulge in doing exercise like breathing in and breathing out so breathing in is one that is it can be a mountain or a water and breathing out is opposite action of that in between that we are asked to hold our breath for some time and that is what is the middle void the center third element and here uh, with when it comes with respect to a, a, a person's mindset okay we should not lose ourself get by getting depressed we should not lose ourselves by getting angry so getting angry is considered to be the high extreme like a mountain and getting depressed is deep into the ocean so in between this having enough control over our mind and heart and that is considered to be the middle void the third element so when you want to appreciate uh, a chinese painting when you want to admire when you want to find out how it is this middle void is essential and this middle void is considered to be the eye of the landscape so when you take uh, the painting which is done by uh, the painter what he did is he uh, painted the wall white and then he painted the landscape so that white base is important 
to make the painting to be somewhat beautiful enough in the same way our mental state of mind which has to be peace and uh, peaceful and uh, calm enough to admire so that is what is given as the eye of the landscape if you want to look at something and admire our eye is essential in the same way people with stable mind were considered to be the eye of the landscape only people with uh, Ma good mental state can admire the European painting. So the second part of this lesson deals with art breadth that is people who have not undergone any formal education uh, with respect to painting and here the second part is given as an article which is written by uh, Brinda Suri for Hindustan Times and it is said as an outsider art getting inside outsider art what is outsider art is people who haven't undergone any education they cannot um, call themselves as painters because they are, haven't done any course or they haven't done any uh, training with respect to that so they are hesitating somewhat to exhibit their art also because that may not be recognized so on such occasion what happened is a French painter his name is Jean Dubuffet he coined a word a concept called art bread so what is this is what is the meaning of art bread is the uh, raw art which is not polished okay people who don't know what it is how to do that okay so if they could able to do it so that can be coined or categorized under this art bread so when you take uh, the people who are doing such painting or some art works okay they are they were hesitating to show their work because they think that they are not professionally trained for that so they they were not coming out to express what they have done so when this word is coined and their works were also recognized under this so many started to come out and exhibit their work and that's why it is considered to be the fastest growing area and when you take those people no they have not undergone any formal education that's why they hesitated to express what they can so it, we can call it as an innate ability or an innate quality what a person could able to have and one such best example for this outsider art is the contribution of Nekchand. So who is Nekchand? This a person uh, who worked in a PWD uh, as a contractor and then he cleared off uh, the forest area which is near his house and secretly he was working during night time over there. He collected up the stones which are of different shape and he made a paradise like a heaven like. So uh, and not only the stones uh, he could able to use uh, broken pieces from the uh, garbages and he made use of all those to create a piece of art and initially it was restricted that is uh, government didn't approve it and it was sealed and later on finding out the work the contribution what Nekchan has made for this later on it is approved and they named it as rock garden it is now in Chandigarh and it is uh, held open for the public to have a view at so here Mm, to appreciate the work what Nekchan has done okay, a, a photo of his garden is published as uh, the cover page of a UK based magazine the name of the magazine is raw vision and what is the picture which is there is women by the waterfall so we could able to find a few girls having the pot over their head and standing on the waterfall so that is there uh, as a anniversary issue cover that is to celebrate their 50th issue and here uh, next chain is a good master in changing the broken pieces into a piece of art and uh, here his contribution to art bread okay is a mind-blowing one and when you take uh, uh, next chand he used to say that the biggest reward what he could able to get is when he could able to see people enjoying his raw garden 
so that is what the reward real reward he can receive so he is not worried about the awards what he is going to get but he if he could able to find people enjoying his creation in front of him it is considered to be his biggest reward and this is what is given here as part 1 and part 2 in landscape of the soul uh, dealing with the painting which are done by people and the education what they have undergone when you take part 2 even people who haven't undergone any formal education and training can also create a piece of art and one such best example is the contribution of nick chand which is rock garden in chandigarh i hope this is helpful for you thank you